But like, this is again already why I start to find it funny. So I'm like, so the writer was like, we got to translate to the audience that what she's trying to do here is real difficult, and then we got to get them information as to why this guy is even her security. I know. Yeah. We'll have him this say, is important stuff. I'm your security because I want to find the spider. Then she's like, they're impossible <laughs> to find. No one's ever found one alive. Like, there we go. Nailed it. <laughs> like, everyone's got the information. Mission accomplished. Now. All of and the then, information uh, has been delivered to the audience on a silver fucking platter. Well, and it just keeps going. She then says, the peptides in the spider's venom supercharge a cellular structure. Why did you even say that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why like, did you say that? How do you know that? <laughs> Why? That's, yep. That's just, okay, all right, then. And then he says, uh, or I think she said a spider could give superhuman strength. And then he says the mythical spider. Or, or he says something that relates to um, the people in the area having like a legend about spider people. And she's like, oh, the spider yet. people who run across the treetops and punish evil men with their black poison touch. I'm interested in science, not legends. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, clear, what the fuck? Yeah, like, clear, <laughs> their, their legends about spider people, after seeing Madam Web, it's way better than our legends about spider people. <laughs> I, this review is like seconds in, and I was like, God, this is horrible. <laughs> like, what? What's going what on? This so, like, it, no, this is, this is express delivery of important information. <laughs> They're just, wow, they're just machine gunning out these important facts you need to know as an audience member. And this is the mark of quality. Before you can even ask any fucking questions, I was like, sorry, there's a, there's a legend of spider people that live here who have super strength because the spiders bit them and supercharged their cellular structures, but you can't capture them alive. The spiders. They they're worship like, fucking, the peptides. This is, this is so much information all at once. And then uh, he says the spiders are wasted here. You're like, what? And then, and, then, and then she says the spiders can cure hundreds of diseases. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, mm. yeah, okay, yeah, okay. So you like, only we let them get degrees, yeah. I feel like there was a way cleaner version of this scene, but it's just like, fuck, okay, all of that just happened, fine. And then she has her, her like pregnancy pains, and she says, oh, she's trying to keep me from working. Which I thought was also a strange line, and it's going to come up later for a really funny line. Uh, but, you know, it's just like, whatever. And he says, perhaps you should rest. And she says, I don't have the time. Like, oh. So I guess uh, something, something may be wrong with it. Okay, that's probably the subtlest they well, ever I, are in this movie. I took that to mean that if she doesn't have the time, like, she's going to have the baby soon, and then she won't be able to research spiders in the Amazon when she died, if oh. she has the baby, right? So she damn, has to, like, erase the, the way of your she goals. has to race the pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, mate, well, it's always, been my it's always been my dream to die in the Amazon researching <laughs> spiders. If I have this baby, that's going to become a serious problem. So he uh, he walks off, and we follow him, and he's like he's looking around in all the tents, and he's looking for something in particular. It's kind of you get a sense of like something's going on with him that's probably not um, you know on the up and up. But then he's distracted because she runs into the place saying, "I found it! I found the spider! Incredible, isn't it? Something so small yet has so much power." I think I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. <laughs> these yeah. are not normal um, lines. These, these normal humans it's, say. If he's been, and also, if he's been here for, like, months and months and maybe years and, you know, doing this business... He like sneaks back and he starts taking all the pictures with his little spy camera, flipping through the notes and everything. I'm like, dude, there's, there's probably not a, there's probably not really a hurry, you know, to do all this stuff. You're you've right. There here, is. You've been out here for months and months, maybe. You're not in a rush. And yeah, you, not only would there have been thousands of opportunities to get it gradually over time, but the fact that the scene treats it as though he has to get it all now, and you're like, yes. Huh? But yeah, she's she's just announcing, I have found it. It is so powerful. And then the guy starts shooting people. Uh, our, our mystery guy, and it's like, oh, oh dear. And she says, what are you doing? I don't understand. The delivery was so <laughs> funny. She just <laughs> saw, like, her fellow researchers, <laughs> expedition people get shot, and she's like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's so funny. She says, like, what are you doing? He's like, I've been searching for that spider for years. And she says, no, we could help so many people. And he says, and I'm not joking, I'm not interested in helping people. No one helped me when my family died. The, the road, my road is not as clear as yours. I didn't have the same choices as you. I don't even... <laughs> it's, Why it's did some... he even need to shoot those two people? I don't know. He could have like, just evil. stolen evil. it at yeah, night or whatever. That he's evil. It's, uh, I've seen someone describe this villain as well-motivated, and I wanted to die. I was like, what? Really? You, you can't really? tell me and this when... 
He like when she says I don't understand, a normal person who has the motivation he has would be like, and you never will, you know, like th this is this goes well beyond things you could ever understand. Like takes it and is like, please don't make me hurt you, like that sort of thing. Wouldn't even waste time explaining his motivation. But no, the writers were like, no, we got to make her understand. We're gonna make the audience understand. How do we do this as fast as possible? Quickly say, make him say, I don't want to help people because I wasn't helped and the, my family are all gone. And you know what? The choices I had to make were harder than your ones. Somebody and then the writer yeah. sat back. He sat back <laughs> in his chair and said, "This is why, this after is writing Kino. Dracula Untold and The Last Witch Hunter and Gods of Egypt and Power Rangers and Morbius, how this do they is do why it? we still make the big bucks." How, I don't understand. <laughs> how do you make those movies? How do you write those movies and still get jobs in I, Hollywood? I don't. I don't understand. In that, I don't understand. Viewed as bad and failed. Um, not films that were bad and made money. Right. Like Alex or films Kurtzman, that were really he, he good that, that actually made money for however bad that they were, you know. But how do you just consistently make bad films? It's, uh... it's, it's like all of the dialogue in this movie is really flat and first drafty. It doesn't feel. I mean, in the acting, never really. Do, it's just. Um, it all feels cheap and just flat and flavorless, and there's no character to anything. It starts here and it continues for the whole movie. Well, it's good. It's because writers, especially these kind of writers, tend to write everybody sounding like them. So you, it almost sounds like there's a conversation between two of the same person. Kind of, yeah. They don't feel like distinct people. They don't act like distinct like, people. Sometimes that, like you know, for instance, I know, like they haven't been introduced yet, but like the girls, it's like this person speaking like this, but with a slight flavor of this. It's it's never a, it's they never sit at and look at it on like the ground level and be like, well, this person would make this decision because this is how I've built them up to this point. Or they would say this because that's how I built them up to this point. The scenes were shown a very like action sort of packed. I think it's just trying to keep you sort of in, in the in the nature of it, but regularly forgets what's actually happening because it'll then cut back to her and she's doing a sort of like how do I put this like like, like a kappa face, winky face sort of thing, being like, How you doing back there? To Ben, who is dealing with someone who's lost their pulse, which I just feel like again, it's like that's that's the relationship, that's the dynamic. Like, oh, someone's dying, watch out, you know, better get him to the hospital. But then he says, not a, great, ben. Yeah, not a great creative decision. Well, so this um, is supposed to tell us what their injury. relationship is, but I think it's clashing. Yes, yeah, they're good buddies, yeah, but the situation like, is dire. Mm hmm. because uh, he yeah, says, Last time I did a trip like this, I was mode. being shot at. And then she says, wouldn't want to be homesick from the army, huh? Uh, and then he says, never thought I'd be this happy to be back in Queens. And she says, you've never been shot at in Queens? This that's dialogue, probably, that's man. Actually, that's actually pretty accurate, that line right there. I, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> this, this is not how you'd be talking to each other if someone was dying right in front of you. It's, uh... I don't even know about the, the nature of saying, like, you wouldn't want to be homesick in the army, so it's kind of good in a sense that you're being shot at, or you were being shot at the last time you did a trip. Like, what? what, what? They're just trying to tell us that they've been on adventures before as paramedics, which you could do but, a like, way we, better job of that. that. The way we walk can... in with the assumption, because they are paramedics. Well, I'm going to assume this isn't their first, like, their, their first day. Because we get that if... It's similar to the kind of dialogue where someone's like, you're my best friend character. It's just, why would they say these things? Yeah, why would I don't think I've ever told... Mean, we go like all the way back to, to our time in the That's Marine right. Corps and before I've this. I've known and... you for 10 years. Like, that kind of shit. When instead, you could just have the characters talk about something that has nothing to do with anything. If they have, like, this relaxed, casual sort of back and forth, um, and they're serious together... Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it, you're, these are the things you're supposed to pick up on based on how they act, not things that you specifically try and implant in people's minds first and foremost. And also just the way it's shot, it's just, there's not, there's nothing interesting about it. It's just super quick cuts, the occasional car noise, and you never get the, you don't, the, the out, what they're trying to say is that like the frenetic outside driving around. It isn't, um, it doesn't, yeah, like, while well, I was saying, it doesn't match the, doesn't match her expression, or, like, the way it's, that the car is moving around on the inside, you know? Well, yeah, and I also, just don't like the idea that this is how they deal with someone who's dying. Uh, we'll see the difference later. They, they, they do an actual, like, how to deal with someone who's actually dying. There is, uh, with 
people who deal with a lot of death, whether it be uh, firefighters, uh, police, or in this case, EMTs, uh, they do tend to have a sort of dark sense of humor to get around oh, that, sure. but not in front of patients. Well, no, no, no. So, so uh, when, can, yeah. when you, and not confirm. only not in front of a patient, but when you've got one that just lost their pulse, that's very bad in yeah. terms of assessing yeah. the situation. You have them in your ambulance and then something gets worse. You know what happens then is like yeah. call outs for what we need and where we need to go and what time frame we have. Not, <laughs> oh, everything all right back there? I think that's cringe. Yeah, basically. No, I'm saying, just I, I, I'm, I'm, I was just pointing. Well, that just happened. I was just pointing. No, yeah, no, you're right. I wasn't I justifying you. it. I was just saying that, like, yes, this is a thing that they, and which leads me to believe that that's as far as it got with like a person being like, oh, I've heard that like EMTs have like a dark sense of humor, and it's like, yeah, yes, but that doesn't mean but... they're sarcastic and they don't care because that's not the well, that's kind of job saying. that you yeah. take if you don't like actually give a shit. Well, that's what I was saying though. It's like that's that's as far as the, well, as and, the and... research got there. It's like, oh, we, we've heard that this is a thing, so we're just gonna throw it in there, you know. Well, and, and, and the comparison would just be that they deal with people in very, very bad situations later and treat them much more serious than that one. I don't know why that one's off. My assumption is because they wanted to try and show us the chemistry of Ben Parker and Madam Webb herself and uh, express that they've had many times, many adventures, many, many histories together. And you're like, okie dokie, thumbs up, I gotcha. I just uh, uh, don't I think it's very in... well executed. When I was in Search and Rescue, one of the guys who was in charge of it was an EMT. And he told he would tell us stories all the time about the crazy shit that he'd have to go through and see. And a lot of the stories were really funny. A lot of the stories were really gross. A lot of the stories were really serious. And the way that he's he was able to like you got the sense of there were like you have to have your modes. You have to be in serious, don't fuck around, no jokes, life saving mode. And then you can go into Oh, all right, you know, wasn't that funny? It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, I've never seen a gallbladder that swollen, or you know, whatever it was. So you'd have to, you need, you need to be able to like have the modes and have the switches on and off, and no one to be serious, and no one to be sarcastic, and no one to bring out the, you know, the dark humor. Well, and not like I said, that, it, it gives you indications of character that aren't meant. They're not. They don't want you to think this about Madame Web. In fact, this film tries to argue she's actually very caring about people. I was literally I mean, about to say that this does not ingratiate the, the, her no. us as a character. Yeah, it makes she's it almost very like unlikable. I you, still don't get she it. She thinks that her mom chose to be in the Amazon despite the risks, and then got herself killed, and thus unable to look after her as a child, Shot? which is reckless. She yeah, got she a was, gunshot wound. Was that this? This is actually a good point of like, well, what information does uh, does Madam have? What does she know that did actually happen to her mom? Does she only know that she was she died in the Amazon question mark? Like, yeah, who, who what about knows? the rest of the family and the kin here in the the United States or wherever? Yeah, did the, the the spider tribe did they restore the body? What about all the other explorers at the base camp? Did they say, yeah, these crazy weirdos came or, down from the trees and stole her body yeah. and, and ran her to a cave somewhere? I don't they took her into the forest. What well, the fuck happened? Yet, she knows it yeah, better yet. Why hasn't she have but yeah. who who told her that? And what else did they say? Is it like who is the yeah, person? Like, literally, she she should have so many questions about how she's even where she is, at how none of them were ever asked is beyond me. Because it looks like she's holding like a birth certificate from Peru in one of the scenes, right? Is I forget what was it from Peru or the U.S. There was I think I think something in the chest was. I think it had like a baby handprint on it or like a baby foot. Yeah, it, it did. It had a baby footprint. I didn't take down the notes, but I would assume that it was a Peruvian. She has a birth certificate from Peru in her box of things. Mm. So I guess that means that she got put through the system and is at least a citizen of Peru. So she must have known that the mom got... So the spider tribe must have taken her to a hospital through some th through some means right so that means that the mom's body surely was given back right i don't know and then I... she would know that she would have died of a gunshot from the crazy because everybody else in the camp yeah would have because there's yeah. other people there was other people you're right the they table. were other people and they would have told everybody what happened yeah so all they of this a fucking crazy also, guy, guy, they would have known who he is too international yeah they know who he is because they have like the photos and everything oh my god i didn't think about this <laughs> and they saw him do it oh, <laughs> they, saw, they saw him do it they know who he is uh, they know everything about the situation gotten away with the it. webs of fader unraveling they are oh, no but because don't it wasn't... forget there's also 
we, we, we just because we, say, we oh. didn't mention it earlier, just so chat no. But when he shot the two guys, there were like noticeably other people yeah, running people around in the background. Yeah, that he did we not saw deal people. With. We saw people in the camp who were obviously not the ones he shot before he ran off. Yeah, they so, knew, and they didn't do anything about it. No, did they tell the world? Because obviously, also, Madam yeah. herself would have found out. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd also like to point, it's a smaller detail, but there's lots of medical records about her having a disease that she wouldn't have been able to survive, but she's fine. So there was already medical That's... records from the United States. You're right. She should have known about, I was going to bring that up later when she finds out about. Oh, well, they, they I'm, weren't so, I'm no, sorry. No, no, it's okay. fair. It's fine no, to bring it up now. Because it, it, it's, it's fair to bring up. It's a, that's more information that she should be aware of, but for some reason doesn't know. And by the way, with how interested she is in why her mother abandoned her, you'd think she may have spoken to her mother's doctor. Like the especially related to the, the the terminal illness she had, or the fellow scientists and who were studying spiders yep. in the Amazon before yep. they died. Yep. But no, there's not. But no. There's, like there's this <laughs> massive gap between. Like we were kind of memeing about it at first. So like, oh, how did she get to America? But like, there's seriously really important stuff that happens between 1973 and 2003. That is like it needs to be accounted for because that's important character stuff. I don't like how they're going to the car. I remember that it seemed yes. really like it obviously was teetering over the edge. I was and actually going to no bring one that seems up. to mention anything about how like it might fall forward. They just go in and like cut the guy and grab him down and then it falls because I guess she's more she's bigger or whatever than the guy was or whatever, but there's no there, there's no attention paid to the fact that the car is about to like fall in. Or, or, like, that someone needs to be in the back, like, holding it down. Yeah. Or they have to tie it to another car or anything like that. They're just, like, it, it might as well have been in the middle of the road with how they treat it when it's clearly, like, halfway hanging off. Yeah, protocol would bridge. be to, to tether it to something. There's yeah. gotta be, yeah, but, there's several things to be done. But you're right, even a selection of well-meaning, aware people could have easily saved it just by jumping... And pushing, you know, on the other side of it, trying to keep it down. Yeah, even away. if you got some bystanders to just hold the back mm -hmm. of the car, that would make, you know, the difference. So anyway, we've got to introduce the bad guy. Even though he's technically been introduced, we're going to reintroduce him. Um, and it's fucking weird. It begins by having him get killed by three spider ladies. And this is the, the half of the footage you get to see of them in their suits. Maybe even more than that. Uh, it's the, more than half. Yeah, <laughs> the snippets like you see in the trailer are all from this moment where the three of them team up to throw him out of a window, and it's very funny because the shot As of him falling, falling it looks like something from Channel Awesome, where they lie on the floor, put their hands up toward the camera and go, no, and then they green screen the he's background out. No, if he falls down. It looks so it awful. It looks so bad. Uh, which is interesting, too, because the implication in that flash forward is how we, I guess, we, a vision is how they refer to it. Um, that shouldn't have killed him, I don't think, because he falls from great heights several times in this movie, as well as gets hit by uh, yeah, I, very fast-moving like, cars. World. It's like equivalent to Spider-Man powers. You kick yeah. Spider-Man out of... I mean, we see it, I mean, obviously not same continuity, but, like, how far did Peter fall in Spider-Man 2? And then he landed on that dumpster. And that was when he like, his powers was... were off, right? Yeah, that's yeah, right. It, it, it... And he survived. Can't even fall. John, like John Wick, has better back than this guy. <laughs> like, got, I, I'm telling you, man, he's got he's got squirrel powers. He can't die from falling. So yeah, that's his. Uh, he's like, whoa, oh my god, I got killed by three spider ladies. Whoa, oof. and uh, oh, I guess I've skipped over the fact that he saw the lady in the fucking whatever the it was. Opera yeah, yeah. House. He's yeah. a yeah. Well, then he, then he, that'll that'll be relevant in a moment. He's he's. He met a lady, and they they had the sex, and then he had his vision, and he's woken up like, oh, jeez. Anyway, yeah, he dies uh, in the vision, and he's, like, real sad. And then she says, uh, bad dream? And he says, not a dream. I'm gonna be murdered one day. <laughs> yeah, so he, says in, he says it in the weirdest, most bizarre, <laughs> most unhinged kind of way yeah. possible, maybe? M maybe the most weird way you could possibly say it. He say he starts talking about how it's like a curse, how he's been yeah. cursed with seeing his death over and over every night for years, um, which is probably pretty rough. But mm -hmm. he did kill that chick in the Amazon when she was researching researching spiders before she died. Yeah, uh, and then he killed her, and then he got cursed. And but they let him go, the spider people. So who knows? 
But it's really, it's a weird scene. It's so funny. All of his dialogue is really badly delivered, possibly ADR, written by, like, a brain-dead zombie. It doesn't it doesn't even reflect close to what I think their goals are when they say these lines. Because him saying, I'm going to be murdered one day, she says, wow, buzzkill. <laughs> that is like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of either of you? Buzz kill. Half response would be, wow, you're an unhinged lunatic. Since we're here on the wiki, I uh, this is also something that I thought was very funny that I think that you should read. Specifically the highlighted bit? Yeah. Alrighty. This is his abilities. In the abilities section, we have expert marksmanship. Ezekiel was a proficient marksman. Whilst in Peru with Constance Webb, Ezekiel was able to fatally kill two members of the expedition in quick succession. Despite his proficiency, he accidentally <laughs> shot and killed Constance. <laughs> 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 I like it's like, you were able to kill two people point blank with a handgun. <laughs> you are an expert marksman. Well, <laughs> except, except the time when you else. shot the pregnant I mean, lady. He did, he did know. He was, he was aware that the closer he gets, the easier the shot becomes. That would be expertise. Mm, right there. A wise uh, man. That's right. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> What a great wiki. Oh, I'm, this oh, is pretty I'm funny. Glad. Look at that one. Ezekiel uses his powers to gain wealth and influence. Where was that in the film? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, who they wrote the up. fucking thing? Because <laughs> was it someone who saw wait, an earlier wait, cut? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. This, the next line's the good one, though. Affording him access to information about facial recognition softwares by the NSA, which he... They don't explain that. He just steals the fucking information from her. They don't Wait, explain like that. So the he bio, steals a password. Yeah. the bio is arguing that he did use his like spider flame powers to discover the information he needed to do the things he does. Even though this is like a wiki. Not, Somebody who just they just casually <laughs> likes the movie could just, <laughs> yeah, fill, just fill this out. out. The yeah, this is all just movie. that's the thing that that I thought was funny. And w if someone was to go into this and. And just randomly type the words like pee pee poo poo at the bottom of the wiki. <laughs> you could just do that, and it would probably be there for years because no one gives a shit. No one, no one cares. <laughs> now, this is where we get to really finite lines that are incredibly funny if you really think about them, slow them down. She points to the screen, and you can see Sydney Sweeney and the other two. And she says, I quote, This is what they look like in your vision as well as you can re recollect. Uh, and they're <laughs> literally like headshot and from their like acting agency. Yeah, page. it is. It is like one hundred percent accurate from his dream. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> There's so much wrong with it. Like, what do you mean? Why would you even say that like that to him? This is as well as it could. You can remember it. You know what I mean? It's like, what do you? Yeah, yeah. they could have. The line could have easily been written as like. So, based on your uh, explanations of what they look like, these are the close. These are some. Uh, some women that I found, and he could have pointed to like a few of the pictures, and be like, "That's one of them. That's one." Like, like, that's the much more logical way of how this would happen. What we have to work with is they've had access to this technology for maybe a night. What did he do? He got it and described how they looked to a machine, and it came up with one-to-one -one accurate copies of their faces. The the gr the greatest forensic artist of all time. I don't understand. And then so the he fact just that put a prompt through Mid Journey, and, and it worked just perfectly. <laughs> squirted out some pictures. <laughs> And well, it's so good that it can actually, with with reference to the images, it can be. It's like, oh, we can remove the costume, and this is what they actually look like. I just don't understand. Like, as well as saying it, like, this is what they look like in your vision, as well as you can recollect. As in, so that's what he already knows. That then, if this is all what the computer came up with, as well as he could recollect. Then, like, wouldn't he be involved in that process? Uh, what I'm trying to say is, like, if I said to Fringy, I'll try and draw something if you can just describe it to me while we're at the computer. And he says, okay, it's like a happy bunny. And I draw that, finish it, and then go, so Fringy, this is my drawing of a bunny based on you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we had this conversation. We just did this together. What do you mean? Like, why are you saying? And it's like, oh, right. Because the audience doesn't know what just happened. And it's like, oh, if only there was a better way to do this, like, being a writer. I don't know. This sucks. But yeah, and he just says their faces have taunted me for years. <laughs> so the three of them highlight that they've seen her before in all the opening places. And they're like, wow, you saved my stepmom. Wow, you live in the same building as me. Wow, you nearly run me over. Which is not what happened. You nearly ran her fucking <laughs> self over. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
yeah, you know, this is so freaky. Wow, wow, wow. Everyone's just so surprised by all the coincidences. You're just like, okay. But um, each of them deliver, like, all of this shit so dead-like. Then she says, I can see the future. I didn't ask for this. I saved all of you, so you're welcome. This is the dialogue. This is what they say to each other in this scene. It's really good. She says, I can't control it. One of the girls says that the other guy, he can walk on the ceiling as a comparison of powers. Why would they do that? When anyone having powers is brand new to them, this woman has come to them saying, I can see that you're going to die and I can prevent it, Final Destination style. And then the other dude is walking on ceilings and they're basically trying to say, like, so this is your power, his power's better. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's so weird to to want to wanna even point that out as opposed to what can we do to not die? Yeah, his pa being able to crawl on the ceiling is more cool than being able to have premonitions yeah. of the future well so i don't know about that the, that is so weird to say but there's a reason that prompts the other girl to say no he can't walk on the ceiling he was using his hands now you might be thinking wait what, what what does that mean and what she's trying to highlight is he wasn't walking he was crawling that's all she wants she's she's being that's it yeah that, that's all she well, wants to highlight here well Mahler, you're not being fair to the movie this is like an obvious setup for later right yeah well that's the, that's where this is going this, this because yeah. uh, the other lady then says, yeah, he was like a spider person, which is another <laughs> weird thing to say. Like, you see a man crawling on the ceiling. If if you don't have Spider-Man or anything like that in your universe, which they don't, what would you compare him to as a creature? I guess you go straight to spider? Like, uh, is, this is hard to uh, sort of think about because Spider-Man is so ingrained in our culture. But seeing a man crawl on a wall, I don't know that everyone would just immediately go like, oh, he's like a spider person. Yeah, I would probably compare it more like something that's closer to a human, like a monkey, like a monkey. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, like someone said, a lizard in the chat. Like that's that could work too, I guess. But yeah, I, I would I would default to monkey every time. You, there's a lot of different things I think people would go with, but she goes with spider person, and that triggers something in Madame Web. She's like, "Wait, spider person? Wait a minute!" And uh, that sends her to go and check her mother's notes from the Amazon because that's going to help her in the plot. How insane is this? Like, nothing anyone said to each other was a reasonable response, and it's now going to prompt her to go and check those notes. And what's back she gonna find? York, right, yeah. Yes, she's gotta go back. She said, like, I'm gonna... And she leaves them here in the forest. She leaves them here in the forest alone. And and, and this is why I said, like, where she... Like, the, the, the range that she would be in, the amount of woods that was required, yeah. not, not be there. She oh, the timeline is gonna get real yeah. confusing soon. Because uh, she drives back, well, she says, I'll be back, and they say, where are you going? Don't leave us. And she says, I have to check something, and you're safe here. Be a Girl Scout. I, 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 you may as well just take <laughs> them with you, I don't know. How is, it, yeah. how is it safer for them to just stay here, especially when they don't know you? They only think of you as almost antagonistic. And as she's leaving, uh, Sydney Sweetie says, can we trust you? And then she just doesn't answer them. Instead says, three hours, stay here. Don't do anything dumb. Seriously, don't do dumb things. And of course, the answer to the question of that, the question asked is, why would you even think that you can trust her? You don't know who she is. Well, yeah, any normal person would just leave. Why would you stay there? The, 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 we cut back to the, the woods and they're like, there's a diner a half a mile down the road. So we can, we can go there because Hungry Girl's hungry. No, um, you forget something. You forgot something that was really great. About when How could I forget? How could you forget? She... Everyone lives alone, or you're about someone else? No, no. She has. She tries to climb on the wall. No, I knew that. I just oh, didn't reference yeah. it because. <laughs> what about what, your rags? Why don't you take that one? What do you want to say about that? Okay, so she reads in her little diary something about how the spider people of Peru they can crawl on the wall like spiders, and then. They then she tries to crawl on the wall like a spider, but she can't do it. And then she like awkwardly slides down onto the floor. And then she tells like then she like says to the cat something like, "Oh, that was don't say anything about this cat." And then the cat goes, <laughs> and then the movie continues. I thought that when they did that joke, the. Uh... In the script, it probably would have read, tries to climb on wall and fails, and they filmed it. She put her hands on it and just sort of, you know, maybe jumped and went back down to the floor. And they were like, man, that's not funny. Can we do anything else? And then maybe someone was like, what if she just slides all the way down to the ground? 
And then someone else was like, yeah, but... why would she do that, though? Yeah, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, this... Well, so, we're about to get so fucking funny in terms of the writer. Like, I, I want to meet them, sort of. Because the girls are in the diner, and they start dancing. Because the music is on, and yay. Not quite the song that will be important is on yet, but it will be. In any case, they walk over to a table to, to talk to some boys, and they want to do some dancing. Oh, it's so nice. But there is a man. Just to be... Hold up, um, the, is the part, is, is the fact that they walk through the woods weirdly instead of using the road, is that of any importance to the film, or...? I don't know if we're supposed to believe that they went to the road as fast as they, like, they didn't know... I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure of what they, they did. Clearly, they clearly show them, like, going through the woods and, like, having to move branches and shit out of the way, and they even say, like, oh my god, yeah. are we lost? Are we lost? Are we? And then they just like stumble in, into onto the highway, where the, right across from the diner. And I'm thinking, why did we even? What was the purpose of that? Um, was it supposed to be like a bait and switch of oh oh they're, they're lost in the woods and it's getting dark? You're like, no, actually they're fine. It's a diner. No, because it Instead is weird. Like you said, the if road. they had come the way the car came, then they would know they're heading to. Well, yeah, that's Aitman how they noticed it on the yeah. way in. Just take the road. Don't, like, walk randomly through the woods in the direction. The Webster herself goes that way on her first attempt after them, right? She goes that direction. Yeah, she just gets in the car and she imagined she, she was able to track them, um, which I thought was surprising for her, you know, because she's not exactly familiar with what might be telltale signs of tracking. But it doesn't matter, because we're not there yet. There is a man in the diner who looks at these three girls and he goes, hmm... And he realizes something, you see, because he's been reading the local newspaper. And the camera shows us that on the local newspaper, now I know you're all going to object to this, but you shouldn't because it makes 100% sense. You ready for this chat? On his newspaper, it has an image of the subway where the events happened and a, he a headline that says, Girls feared to be abducted. And they have images of the three girls. And that's how this man knows that those are those three girls. And so he will now call the police because he has spotted them. And that's how the big bad man will be tipped off as to where they are. First of all, how would it be printed on the newspaper when it happened that day? It'd be that's printed just on how good the newspaper. Daily Bugle is. Saying it happened that day is over-exaggerating it. <laughs> oh, no, under-exaggerating it. It happened <laughs> like a few yeah, hours ago. Yeah. yeah. It's already on the papers. Uh, front and page. Then the front is, page. If yeah, they called left. the police, the police should be there very so soon. Just to be, <laughs> very, just to very, be clear, just soon. don't don't skip over it too much because it, it's even more. So not only pieces. would it had to have been put onto the the newspaper, would have happened to got the news, print out the news with the page, made the actual newspaper, physically transported the newspaper yep. to wherever it was that this guy got it, or to the diner itself, over and in New then. Jersey. Yeah. yeah, over in New Jersey, an adjacent state, right? And then he would have had to read it and then and then see it and then notice them based off of incredibly well, and can we be clear, blurry you've, video feed. You're, you're slightly ahead of like the craziness because the event would have happened. Police would have arrived on the scene and then been like, okay, we need, to, we need to check the cameras. And however long that took, they finally got the footage. They looked through it. Crazy Spider-Man is killing everybody. Also, three girls ran away Feared with, abducted. to be fair, four girls ran away. That's what it would have looked like yeah. on the camera. It wouldn't yeah. have looked like abduction. Yeah, and they then, would have all escaped together. They all went together. Yeah. And if any of those cops survived, we have to assume they didn't because that makes more sense. But if they had, they would have been able to corroborate that, no, it was just the crazy Spider-Man. This has nothing to do with anything else. And again, and, how would... um, and then the police would have to cooperate with we'll like journalism to help get this like you know yeah get get it out that this is definitely what we need to find and do. He has all the material you need, like the verification to make sure they don't fuck any of this up. Just none of that happens. It goes straight to the equivalent of the Daily Bugle <laughs> everywhere. Just get these out. And then what Rag said about the processing of all this information. Then the papers go out, and apparently this all happened in about three oh, hours. Oh, and of course, 
making the choice as the editorial that the front page is that rather than the front page is a man was crawling up the walls and jumping Wait, around. Six and cops around slain and by yeah. mysterious yeah. superhero would, spider? Yeah. You know for a fact that would be the front page. It wouldn't be the three girls have been be abducted. It would be the, this fucking crazy mass vigilante person just killed a whole bunch of... Well, he's just a monster. I don't know Cops what the hell's the going subway, on. Yeah. Creature just dis dis described as crawling on walls and killing people in single punches. And then he would have had to see these three girls at that diner. Clearly they're of their own will. They walk mm -hmm. in, they order a bunch of food, they have a good time, they meet up with a bunch of boys, they're talking, they're doing all that gay shit, and then he's like, oh, look, maybe those girl, those three girls, maybe those are the ones from this state. Well, there are images of their over... faces on the newspaper, which means they managed to get that from the camera, I guess. That's how good it was. Oh, uh, there's, yeah, the that, 2003 the security yeah. camera. 2003 <laughs> public CCTV. You know, to, to, to jump ahead a bit, he's called the cops. Cops never turn up. To be fair, they Frankie, just never show up. there's a reason for that. There is a reason, actually. Oh, wait. Was there? there actually, yeah, we'll it's, get there. It's, don't it's worry. very briefly addressed, but it is actually <laughs> Oh my actually god, addressed. I don't remember this reason. Um, yeah, it's, it'll, it'll, it's very exciting. But yeah, overall, no fucking way any of this could possibly have happened, and what a lame reason to get them back, when you could have just had it be that one of the three girls, like, thinks, oh, this is crazy, we've calmed down, I'm gonna call, you know, someone or something, even the police, fuck it, she could call the a police. A friend of mine. I'm gonna well, they're not allowed to have friends rags, so if she calls, the, it would make sense for her to call the police. Like, we want to we want to make uh, sure well, everything's cleared up. Well, Hungry Girl could call her friends, right? She had some nope, friends no she friends. was going to meet up with no on friends. this case. Oh, okay. No, no friends. All right, but well, fair enough. Th it I'll, would I'll achieve right the exact same thing with way less bullshit if you just have one of the girls. Probably Sydney Sweeney be like, we should call the police, we should, we should put ourselves in. But, to be fair, later in the film, they will be posed the question of whether or not they should put themselves into the police, and they will answer that. But we'll get there. Not right now, though. Anyway, uh, the guy calling the police to alert them uh, alerts the lady on the NSA tech, who then alerts bad guy, and says, you know, we, we, we got him, they're in a diner. And so he then uses a call sign of some kind that he's aware of thanks to the NSA computer to essentially sign in and pull any cops off that scenario. He says, I've been there, don't worry, these aren't the girls, 100% not the girls. So, we're supposed to believe ah. that, like, with a verbal code, he's able to confirm with, you know, NYPD that he is a trusted, like, officer on the case. And I was just thinking to myself, like, wouldn't they actually have active officers that are using codes? As in, if he uses one that is valid, it would also relate to someone who is in the field, so to speak, on the beat, whatever. As you in, figure? yeah. let's just say but he's using that... the code for Peter Jones, and it's like... It's like, and, and you know, he signs in with that and then says, Yeah, I'm, I'm there already. And it's like, But Peter, yeah, you're not there. Peter you're, Jones. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was just like, What is, how is, how how is it? Work. Why is that even something he can do? I don't know. I don't know how that makes any sense at all. It, they just want to try and cover their asses because they knew the police should show up as well. But he says, mm -hmm. Nah, don't. It's fine. And that apparently works. And, and I'm sure that the guy who was there at the restaurant didn't think anything was weird when, you know, I guess he finished his meal and the police never showed up. I guess he left. He's <laughs> like, uh, they'll <laughs> sort it out. My job's so done. My f and I know that uh, we're about to like get into it. My, my favorite thing about this, right, is now sh like she's on her way back at this point, right? We've already established that. Uh, we haven't gotten right. to what she's up to yet because the last thing I was going to say is, if the guy called the police, then the amount of time it would have taken for NSA lady to pick that up to relay the information to our, our bad guy and give him all the information he needs to trick the LAPD to, sorry, not LAPD, NYPD to um, then be able to sign in and call them off in that amount of time. It wouldn't be the NYPD, though. That cop probably would have turned up. I, I think so. I think the, the whoever was on yeah, set on the case probably would have arrived. It's not like she would have gotten the phone call instantly. That would have taken time. Wouldn't that happen instantly? I wouldn't no have thought way. so, no. And, and all those little pieces of getting to what they needed to do, I, I just don't see why the police wouldn't already have showed up. But whatever, that's, that's like the least of the stretches across all the stuff that's happening in this film. But yes, that would take us back to the Webster. He's, uh, she's arriving back at the forest, and it is seemingly nighttime, which... So, here, here's a detail that I love... Um, so to get from New York to New Jersey, 
and back and forth and all this stuff. You need to go over various points, either the George Washington Bridge or the Lincoln Tunnel, one of these things, which are very heavily... Uh, they pay a lot of attention to the cars that are going through there, especially in 2003, uh, you know, because there was a little incident a few years prior to that. Uh, she has no license plates on her car. She did. She took them off the taxi. She That's right. She takes them off. And no one seems to care. Not the New, New York. Are we supposed not, to not, believe not she only NYC? took them off when she parked and she put them back on when she was. No, because I, I, I'm pretty certain. And I, I mean, it was very brief when she gets into this, like, you're trying to outrun the, the truck that she's getting there, and which she passes twice, might I add. They show it in a scene, she passes it. Then they, like, do some stuff, come back, and she passes it again. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, okay. Which is a great jump cut that they show the same thing twice. Uh, but that was an unintentional showing it twice. I'm pretty certain I saw that she still had no license plates. Now, yeah, even if she no did, way. even if she did, the, there's no way she would have gotten this far through New York City without some way of it being ran. Uh, it, it, well, it, I mean, it's a stolen taxi would have been reported. exactly. It's a stolen taxi it would have been reported. All this stuff. So either way, she's screwed, and it's not affecting her in the slightest. It's gonna get difficult to, as a viewer, understand how stupid this is about to get. But I'll do my best. Okay, so the girls start dancing to "Toxic" by Britney Spears. It comes on. Oh, here we go. Toxic, yay, woohoo! And then uh, Madam Web is like, ah, oh, they've uh, they've gone. Like, she's figuring out where they've gone, so she walks to the diner, and she arrives right as they're dancing to Toxic, and she's like, what are you guys doing? I told you not to do that. You, sh you shouldn't be out here. You should be in the forest. You'd be safe there, you fools. And I think even Sydney Sweeney's like, I'm sorry. And it's just like, why have you guys even, what is, <laughs> like, what is the nature of this? Like, Stockholm Syndrome already. Like, they don't seem to just feel like, this is insane, we should be going to the police, whatever. No, it's fine. She's just mad. It's like, okay, but then... Spider-Man, evil Spider-Man, he comes through the doorway, like, oh boy, here we go, and they do the thing, it's in the trailer, he kills everybody, and it's quite, it's quite spooky, even with, uh, he's, he's toxifying one of them, and in the background, you, you hear all lyrics relating to toxic, it's very clever, very interesting, very cool, um, but then it goes like, and, and it's stuff that Madam Web has now seen in the future, and so now she has a chance to change it. So she decides, I'll go by car instead. I won't walk to the diner, I'll drive. The only thing is, that hearing on the radio that Toxic has started. Okay, so... I don't know the runtime of Toxic as a song. Three minutes, Maybe 19 it was on the She hears it on uh -huh. her radio in the car, which prompts her to think, right, I gotta do a different plan. But you're already thinking to yourself, like, wait... So the forest area was less than possibly two minutes away from the diner? Even though they said it was half a mile. By which foot? Is what, that's like 700, 800 meters. Yeah, that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Not, um, you have a car just drive which it looks there. Like well, so she, walked, she does drive just, there, and it takes her longer. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's right behind him, right? She shows up <laughs> after. She shows up, she after, shows up him. after Evil Spider-Man when, before walking... She showed up before. Now, maybe yeah. it is that there was a direct path through the forest, but half a mile is not a short distance. By foot, that'll take you some amount of time, presumably longer than driving a car at, like, you know, 50, 60 kilometers per hour. Yeah, she's Russian. So, yep. and, you know, the forest was deliberately shown to us as difficult to move through. Rags brought this up. I was like, why would you want to go that way? This is not a footpath. You could easily get to one. You knew where it was. So this is very confusing, and the whole point is to facilitate the payoff of her running over evil Spider-Man. Um, yeah, because you would want to... it The timing and everything that goes into it, and it's ugh, it's weird. It just happens. None of it makes it's any sense. I was, I was totally it, yeah. confused when uh, Toxic started while she was in the forest. I was like, they're dead. There's no way you're getting to them. They're dead. But then the film is just like, no, she did. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> sure, fine. Um, and yeah, he uh, he grabs her as they're trying to leave and poisons her. And you're like, oh bit. no, just that's awful. Yeah, he gives her gives her a little poison. You're like, oh, that's terrible. We'll come back to that. Um, so she's got them all in the car and they're leaving. She's real mad as she as she would be. She's like, do you guys think of anyone but yourselves? You're so impulsive and entitled. You don't listen. Your futures were almost so different. You're lucky I saw them. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> so bad. And she delivers it so badly. And then the so really badly. funny part, Cindy Sweeney puts on her glasses <laughs> again. I'm like, <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll go back to being nerdy. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's unbelievable because, like, first of all, nobody knows what's happening. Remember when they asked her anything and she said, don't ask me questions? So she mm -hmm. was like, you should trust me and just stay in the forest indefinitely. They decided not to. Crazy, I know. Yeah, and can you imagine? As a result of that, that, she calls them impulsive, entitled, and they don't listen. By the way, oh, just to be clear, if anyone in chat, if this happens to you, don't let people take you into the middle of the forest. No. Don't Dude. let people do that. It means they're going to kill you. Because the film is trying to develop the idea early on that, like, see how she's kind of like a mother to them? And you're like, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. It, it, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, yeah it Everybody's does. mother just randomly drops them off in the middle of the woods and says, stay Without here for three hours and I'll come back. <laughs> And yeah, they say sorry, and she says, yes, yes, you should be so sorry. All of you should be sorry. That's how, she, that's how she's delivering this shit, too. Yeah, but yeah, to be fair weird. to it, it's a really bad line. Like, delivering that well is tough. So you remember that line from really far back no. in the film, right at the beginning, where her mum was working and she says, oh, she's trying to keep me from working. It's talking about being a prego and the baby maybe mm -hmm. kicking or having a pain or whatever. Now, any normal human being... Would see someone say that and be like, oh, look at you, being silly. Like, oh, like, the baby's trying to stop you from working. <laughs> so, Madam Webb sees this, because she's now in the past. She sees her mum say that and goes, why did you hate me so much? <laughs> I thought it's this really was weird. hilarious. Like, so, and she delivers it, like, almost, like, in Scary Movie, if you've seen it. The kind of, are you trying to make this funny? I don't understand. And why do you misunderstand so much about your mum when you've been told already by the guy that she came here looking for healing? Like, do you not care? She didn't even ask about that, by the way. She's just, whatever. But she heard that line and she was like, you hate me. Then she sees the mum get shot. And she... Like, th this is on Dakota Johnson, I think, at this point, because her performance was fucking awful. She's watching her mum get killed and she's like, oh. Oh, she's like holding Damn. her mouth? Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, oh no, uh, if I cover my mouth, it's less of my face that has to act. Oh, ah, uh, oh my god. And then this is where the film, like, you've already seen from everything we've described, or heard, uh, that the film doesn't trust the audience member to understand anything that's happening. So the further along you get, the more explicit you often will get with, like, character journeys and themes and stuff, so you can already guess that this is about to get real explicit. She sees the mum meeting with a doctor, the doctor says, your test results have come back, you know, no cure. And the mum says, single target nucleotide intervention. That's something that I need that I could possibly get with the weird research that's been done in a distant part of, like, the world. And, uh, Madam Webb's watching this happen, she's like, Oh my god, you, you went there for me. You did it, you did it for me. <laughs> you reached then, the spiders in the Amazon for me. And she's like holding me. her throat and her face and her mouth. Oh and then, uh, <gasps> yeah, yeah, she's having all this. And, and, and the mom says, I'm unwilling to accept a diagnosis of helplessness. And I'm not going to teach my daughter to do that either. What? <laughs> By the way, this was this was the part of the movie. I, this is where I started to really laugh. Yeah, it's this really stuff funny. This was hilarious. This stuff was, oh. Boy. And uh, the music is fucking swelling. It's like, -da 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 -da, like realization, happy, blah, blah, blah. It's meant to be like the epic sort of hero realizes their true potential sort of music, but it's all a meme. This, uh, this is this... mega memes. Oh, ultra memes. This is, this is what Dakota Johnson then says. She says this. This is all the actual dialogue. She says, you did it. You did it. I never knew I was sick. The spider venom, it did have healing properties. I'm so sorry I spent so long being mad at you. <laughs> Someone wrote that. Like, <laughs> Stop it, please. I can't take it. <laughs> uh, random film talk says in the chat, I diagnose you with helplessness. <laughs> I, like... 
I really? don't know what they were thinking. I really, I do not the, understand oh, what they were thinking. Pringy, they, they didn't give a fuck. This guy, you, this guy, he didn't give a fuck. He's like, I'm just going to write this, whatever, get my paycheck. Doesn't, I'll get another big, massive, multi-gajillion dollar project. Doesn't matter. Fuck it. Whatever. I know, I clearly know somebody. I've got dirt on somebody in the industry. It's like they. It's like the thing at the diner when they go into the Spider Verse and talk to each other. Mm -hmm. It's just like they just don't care. They just gave up and are like, "Well, I just write this to happen." Gave up. Doesn't matter. <sighs> uh, it actually doesn't matter. Just whatever. Just yeah. This happens the, now. I reeling from that dialogue. What you may not realize at the time is she hugs her mum at that point, and the mum responds. She's like happy and hugs her back. I can't yeah, even begin to the understand past, what interact. the fuck is happening. And then she's underwater, then she's like in the water and surrounded by a bunch of webs. She traveled yeah, she's like through the webverse back in time and interacted with her mother. I don't know. While she was pregnant with her. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> and the film is like, isn't this wonderful? And you're just sitting there like, what is happening? <laughs> <No>. like, <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. Oh, it's amazing. And by the way, I, this isn't the super funny stuff, guys. We're not even there yet. No, this is like this is hilarious. But what we have coming? Mm -hmm. Oh man! Like I said, the third, like the last third of this movie, fucking saves it. It turns this movie into something magical. So recovering from all of that, she can then speak to the spider guru again. She says, "I thought my mom didn't care about me." You know, she always thought it, right? Like, that was the assumption. My mom didn't like me. And he says, well, sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself for the ones you love. Wow. Wow. It's inspiring, honestly. And yeah, you know it what? really is. It makes you think, does that this apply movie... to anyone else in the film? Maybe even her? I don't know. Wow. This movie makes me want to sacrifice myself. Yeah. <laughs> so deep. Uh, so... She says, how, how was I even there? How did I do that? How did you do that? And then he says, no, you did that. You're starting to see what you're capable of. You came here to learn the truth of your past. And now you will need to embrace your future. Did I say, uh, or mention how much I hate his dialogue? <laughs> he doesn't speak to it like a person ever. But none of them do, but it's he's different. Like, it's particularly, I am talking to the audience. Yeah. Um, and she says in response to that, by the way, the stupid like floaty language. Uh, seeing into the future doesn't help me fight Ezekiel. I gotta stop him before he kills the girls. I can't leap. I can't crawl on walls. I can't do death poison. And his response to this is, You didn't get you the gift gun. of greater physical strength, or the ability to release poison. But seeing into the future is only the beginning. Your mind has infinite potential. If you use the web to be in more place than one, to be in more than one place at one time, you can, uh, you could you could save time. You can. You're the only one that can change the future. And uh, and 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 I pause because he then says yes. something else. A last uh -huh. line to to complete yeah. the point he's making here. He says, "Oh uh, yeah." When you take on the responsibility, great power will come. That is um. <laughs> there it is. There that it is, is like one of those you should be disqualified <laughs> from writing kind of like this fucker. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> this fucker. Every single line that comes out of his mouth is a trailer line, but that one is particularly cringe. Hey guys, get it? We're Spider Man, kind of. You like Spider Man? <laughs> he said the oh. line, kind of. Did you see our old Kabuki outfits? How they kind of looked like the Spider-Man outfit because we were red and then we had the web and the baby <laughs> oh. Remember, remember, just to remember, the writer, Dracula Untold, The Last Witch oh. Hunter, Gods of Egypt. The writers, I think you mean. It's Morbius. a pair. Working together. Oh, Jesus. Kyle Ben, he's back. <laughs> Kyle Ben is back, Kyle everybody. Ben is he, looks, old. he looks so confused and dry. This is season one meme <laughs> coming back. <laughs> Kyle Ben. One might have assumed they just forgot what the line was, but no, they're trying to be like, we can do our own cool thing. And it's like, shut up. Stop. Sit down. <laughs> Good oh lord. Great web comes great. Yeah. Degree uh, or some shit. <laughs> did they write Morbius too? Yeah, they wrote Morbius. 
God damn. Dracula Untold, yeah. The Last Witch Hunter, Gods of Egypt, Power Ranger credits, Morbius, Matt. How do you keep... I don't... Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't, how it, does it honestly. happen? How we're, does we're, it happen? We're hoping there's a pop of some kind money happening with this because it's insane at this point. Got off way too long. <laughs> like I said before, if they wrote terrible films that made money, that would be one thing. But yeah. like their entire career has been writing things that have failed commercially and critically. I mm -hmm. don't understand. I don't get it. How do you write <sighs> Morbius and they're like, let's bring you back from Adam Webb? We gotta write these these writers, man. They they just surely that film's failure had nothing to do with the writing. We gotta bring uh. these guys back. These are fucking gold. <laughs> yeah, Michael Bay films, they made a profit for the most part. They made money. The That's Resident Evil films, those made a profit. Yeah. But now we're in a weird era where you can write something or direct something that fucking failed. <laughs> and then it's like, here you go, Avengers movie. Maybe they just tell everybody, it's like, oh, it wasn't the writing, of course, it was all these unforeseen circumstances, so... It wasn't yeah. the storytelling. And now... No, it was a, a bad trailer, it was... Yeah, uh, and now uh, I'm even uh, better to hire, because now I have the experience of knowing what doesn't work. More so than that. And also, I'm really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth emphasizing, like, what a bizarre... What a bizarre, like, plot structure, where the main character just goes to another country for, like, 15 minutes in the middle of the film. Yeah, I mean, and they all deal with it pretty well. In fact, the, the what I was going to say is that they all don't seem phased by it, right? Which is super crazy. Like, we basically put everyone on pause. Yeah. They have to, like, do a bit. It's like, it's funny. Now, Ben has known the girls significantly longer than Madam Webb has. Yeah. He's been, he's been hanging out with them for, like, a week. And also, he would have had to, she would have had to tell him to not call or talk to anybody about it. Um... To keep it all secret, to yeah. not tell and make sure that um, Aunt May didn't talk or tell about anything either. Like it has to be a secret because someone's trying to kill. And then they would be like, "Oh, well, what do you mean we have to keep it secret? What happens if someone finds well, yeah, and they're out? In Mary's like, what, house. Are they in danger or whatever?" There are three girls living well, yeah. in a house that she's just got to deal with. And Ben's gonna just have to say, "Like, yeah, they'll only be here for like a week. Hopefully, just don't ask any questions about that." It's like, "Oh, that's cool. No." What if the police like knock on the door and ask questions? What if hey, are you're these the girls? Why would the police the be their rags? <laughs> Is it because that would be the obvious thing the police would do? Like, when, no, it's not like they have I mean, her identity if, or anything. I think like four or five days goes by and Madame Webb hasn't returned from Peru and the Amazon. What? What if one of the girls is like? I think we should call the police. I think she's dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I have a oh, like no. I have a. I have a life, and I I gotta go to school, and, you know, stuff. Yeah, Evilman again, and he, well, because we fast forward to, I guess, around about the time Madam is, is returning, and he says, every day that goes by, my appointment with death gets closer, and you still found nothing. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> my appointment with death gets closer. Is your hair gray yet? Do you look like you do in the dream? Yeah, well, you can't deny it's closer if any time has Have passed. Have you noticed any, like, is there anything about, uh, you know what I would do is I would, um, there's a lot of interesting stuff you could do. If you always saw a vision of them killing you in the future, and it was like that bed in your room where you lived, what if you moved? Like, what exactly. if you got a different house? What if you, what if you said, oh, I'm having this dream every night? What if I what if I keep a calendar on the wall so that I know the date that this happens? <laughs> I said, in the dream? why doesn't he look at his phone? Should, yeah. yeah, like, um, what if I uh, what if I do something? You know, like, like yeah, I said, move, put a calendar on the wall, something like that. But nope, none of that, none of that at all. Um, unless he has uh, no autonomy in this vision, he simply watches it happen, and in the vision, there's no indication of any kind of anything that he could possibly use. Well, it doesn't make sense anyway. We've kind of been over, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's we can fucking just, insane. Yeah, we, we can just move right along. <laughs> and he says, um, how have they been hidden for a week? So that you know a week has passed. Someone said no <laughs> yep. lucid dreaming. No, no, no. This isn't lucid dreaming. What if he put a calendar on the wall in real life? What if he moved houses in the real well, world? Well, but Rags, that would be fated, so then that calendar would fall off the wall the day the vision happens, so that you can't see oh, it. Oh, and then when, and then the vision would just move to a different house or something, <laughs> yeah. instead of getting kicked out the window. He literally destroys the building, well, and the something. vision is like, ah, but that's fated. He gets kicked under his lawnmower or yeah. something. 
shoots himself in the head and fate like prevents it. <laughs> like, I, I moved houses, but still they find me. Where, wherever I'm sleeping, it's, it's where they, they, they manage to kill me. There's nothing I can do to escape it. Which is already, like, lame and ugh. But and what, it's some, and, and again, these are too. like the small things. If he got particularly deranged, he could like I don't know. He could like draw a knife against his like cheek to see if he had a scar in the future. It's like, well, the fact that I didn't have a scar in the future now I've got one. That's got to change something, right? And then if it just gets reflected in the dream and he started getting even more unhinged, that feels like a story. Somebody constantly trying to change the future, but every time their dream just keeps adapting to the crazy things that they do in their lives. To the point that they maybe realize that they're, like, actually insane and that they need to, I don't know, like, live in the present or get help. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that there was a part where he's about to jump on the ambulance and they defibrillate the top of the ambulance. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it shocks him off of it. Mm -hmm. Did I, you not like that moment? No, no it brought me joy. But <laughs> I was gonna it's say. Just, it's just... It's just so fucking insane. They 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 def just to be clear, they defibrillate the top of the inside of the ambulance when he jumps on it, and it shocks him to the point where he like flies off the ambulance and into a nearby parked car. Mm -hmm. the, I said this movie was really fun. <laughs> I know. It's just like, isn't that insane? That's wild. That just happens. They just do that in the movie. They should take that with them. They should take that defibrillator with them in case he gets close and then, go, and pew, then pew, shock pew, him yeah. away so that he goes and he flies and hits a wall or something. I agree. Um, <laughs> I've never seen this, but this is unprecedented. Uh, I have pulled up the most relevant screenshot for what happens next. <laughs> yeah. So, he falls, and as Fringy mentioned, he has the stupid, like, Oh, no! No! And what's so weird is no. you can see this distance. It's not that far for, and we, I guess we didn't mention this, but there's earlier parts in this film where he jumps off of places and lands that are huge distances, more than this. So, yeah, he can very easily recover strange. That. He's also been hit by two cars. One being an ambulance in mm -hmm. midair. <laughs> yeah, but this yeah. is a Pepsi sign. This is it's not even the Pepsi sign, it's one of the letters. It's like, is it the S yeah. or the B e or It's the... clearly the B from Bepis that hits him upside down. Yeah. <laughs> so how much money did Pepsi give this movie? <laughs> well, yeah, to so, be the so hero that stabs. kills the villain. Pepsi kills the bad guy, it falls on him and he just dies. There's no reason to think this would yeah. kill him. <laughs> it falls it on does. him perfectly too. It's like it's no it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you be it's you could see him through like the it's is it the P that lands on him, but you could see the um yeah, you, you could see, see his, his face like in the eyes. in the loop of the P. <laughs> and right. you see the little CGI blood behind him on the pavement. Can I just <laughs> say by the way, this is like looks like the Marvels. They put the villain death in the fucking trailer. So weird. Yeah. I don't know why both I don't know what they were thinking with that Marvel's one. She explodes <laughs> and they're like, yeah, let's chuck that in the trailer. Well, we don't want people to be like worried or anxious that the bad guy wins. You know, we'd better throw into the trailer oh, that. Yeah. Don't worry, guys, the good guys win, the bad guy loses. Do you know that apparently they shot an alternate ending for that where Captain Marvel also dies? Oh, oh wow. Only. Yeah, apparently that was the case. They shot an alternate ending where she like explodes. Do you think that when they pitched they decided... that to Bree, she was like, sure. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, maybe. And, and like, I would have thought you'd be out, upset. Oh, She's like, yeah. We're not getting rid of you just yet. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, then she all equally right, is like, sure. fine. That's fine. Whatever. Yeah, all right. Um, But with... anyway, that's the end of Evil like, Spider-Man. That's He's it. Done. We'll, we'll miss him. But, he was so, so great. So is Madam Web. She's well, yeah, trouble. so she, you know, you think like, oh, we did it, bad guy's dead, but no, she falls too, and as she's falling, you see fireworks are slamming into the water around her, and unfortunately... Well, she falls into the water. <laughs> Luckily, yeah. she falls into the water when he fell on the pavement. Yes. But also, she fell into the water from pretty high to the point that that fall might have killed her. Nah. She fell off the top of the a web. building. Like, the web. what, you, what you is that, like a good 30 meters? Can you, you, I mean... Oh yeah, you can, yeah, you can absolutely fall into water. On your back? On, on your, your back. back? Oh, on your back. Uh, 
Because if you did like the emergency I don't know about your back. where you, you know, like you hold your arms together and you well, go no, straight I can down. Sure. The water, yeah, I've, the water's I've already that, broken but... up because of all the fireworks, you know, so she's not slamming ah, into a flat. Right. She's the fine. Water, water, she's fine. Yeah. The web. <laughs> fine. Fringy, the web. The web mm -hmm. does the guide web. her to safety, but the web taketh as much as it giveth. <laughs> and <laughs> the web giveth and taketh away. A firework. This shit was. I knew about <laughs> some of this, like the character from the comics, right? But I didn't. I didn't know they were doing this. So, the firework goes into the water and slams right into her eyes, <laughs> and it's just like, what? Why? This saw uh, it. <laughs> and, and, uh, like, would and now it she's lose blind. momentum because it's water again. Yes, it would. Fire? Yes, it would. It would lose a lot. <sighs> Bullets slow down dramatically when they hit the water. Yeah, she was like yeah, pretty far about, down after into about the water. Three feet, you're basic. You're basically bulletproof after. About she was three very feet, far so. down. She was really very far down. Far down. She's yeah. probably like thirty feet down. She was down far. And that's I don't know it. why, but this leagues. that kind of reminded me of how, like, in the the like reboot new timeline X Men films, that the reason why Charles is bald is because the apocalypse thing made his oh hair fall out. Oh my god, that was so funny and stupid. <laughs> it, re it reminds me of that, where like you come up with these really weird and stupid origins for the way that a character is supposed yeah. to look. What a film! Yes, and that's the end. Like what I said, I feel I have movie. made my argument for why this is fun to watch. It's funny. It's a funny I've, movie. I've looking back on it and talking about it again, it has gone up in my estimation as a so bad it's good kind of movie. It's so funny. It's if, hilarious. Yeah, there really is a sort of <laughs> There really is a <laughs> There there's just <laughs> Don't stop. There is just <laughs> It, I mean, look at it. No, I won't <laughs> look at it. I will not look at it. This is madness. They put that on her face. <laughs> it looks so awful. It looks so bad. Is she, is she, is she, wait, Free, is she there in spirit? Is that what that is? Uh, I think that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of her projections. It's one of her projections, right? Yeah. Her spirit oh, by the projections. Way, that uh, that that shot, like at the end of the, I'm pretty sure that's reused. The shot where they were looking at uh, what's his name falling out the uh. Yeah, they the oh, God, it is. They I think you're right. It and then took out the background because I guess they didn't shoot anything. Well, so that. Gary said that he thinks that this was added way later to try and like you know bait, the, bait. their avengers. Yeah. I I believe I can believe that totally. It's so fucking um, cringe. But it's I mean it's so funny because there is no future here. The best I could imagine, the best would be that they would pick one of them to do like maybe a Spider Woman movie about, if they were up for it. Which why would they be? You know that's that to me seems like the best that they could hope for in terms of continuing this. But why even bother? It's a meme. Just give up. Move on. Try something else. <laughs> I don't even. <laughs> I do think it's just such a funny movie. It's, it's very, this movie, it's very totality is funny. It is everything about it. You know, like like we started off with all of the mark. Like it took us an hour to get to the movie because the marketing and the interviews and the posters and the fucking ocean spray cranberry juice was so weird. Uh, wait, and what What was the, the art, the, the thing that we were meant to look at, right? The meme? Oh, yeah, the Bayouin thing. Really excited about. Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. We got to oh, see it. Wow. Because I, I haven't looked. I, I wanted to save myself until I'm ready. Dude, <laughs> just, I just, this movie makes me laugh. <laughs> like, in its very being. Just even kind the of. words of Adam Webb saying them is funny. I think I don't know the picture of her with that that big red visor on her face. Oh, that must have it's... been really like tough to <laughs> That's shoot, you know, in terms of just showing up on set, putting all of this on, and like, all right, action. That's just wild. Like, that's, that's, that's the be best rough. you came up with. That looks awful. Eighty million dollars. <laughs> Which I feel it's so funny. That's that is dramatically less than a Marvel movie typically costs, but it's still a lot of money to spend on a film. And this doesn't feel um, like it costs eighty million dollars. Yeah, 
Yeah. This doesn't feel like an $80 million Oppenheimer one. It's an hour longer and costs $20 million more than this. And, had and it was like, car. it had and a bigger had... cast, a better cast. It was a very, very immersive 1930s, like 2030s, 40s 40s, period movie, yep. right? That was an hour <laughs> longer. You're right. Had a much better soundtrack. Um, oh, yeah. Big amazing cast. cast. Multi many locations, mm -hmm. um, all these sets, and this is just let's just well, yeah. Like, how much did it cost to just go shoot in a forest? How much does it cost to just go to a diner and book it out and then shoot a few scenes there? Yeah, it's just a diner. Much, it's just a random it warehouse. It's just a, an it's a just a bed or an apartment to a roof at night to just shoot. Though it probably was green screen. <laughs> that's the thing as well, and that's all extra. You can't work. just. You can't just bring you can't cameras just go to a location. You can't just work overnight. <laughs> like, none of that. They went with the Great Responsibility one. Wait, wait, a, wait, okay. wait, wait. Like, that's... <laughs> I guess there's a new one hit yeah, off the press. We got memes out. incoming. That's the Inco thing. The, by the way, also, like, the memes in, in the Discord, the EFAT memes, they have been really good. Today, a lot of... Uh, a lot I mean, of the EFAT memes have been They're so always good. Greatest memes they are always memes. good, but some days they're always gooder than others. Is, right, come uh, on, Mola. I want to see these memes. Yeah. Come what do you on. mean? I'm going to go one. <laughs> Hello. You just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.